Please rewind this cassette. So I finally caught up with seeing every movie in 2022 that I had missed previously. A lot of the Oscar bait movies, the critically acclaimed dramas, or the indies that went under the radar that I never had a chance to go see in the theater. Now, one thing that was very apparent in 2022 was that only a couple kinds of movies were really making money. Animated films weren't really doing the performances that they used to do outside of like Minions. Comedies weren't performing well. Obviously, certain genres are just gone altogether. Now, stuff like Top Gun or the occasional superhero movie like The Batman did perfectly fine. But another genre that has continuously overperformed for the last decade plus is the horror genre. So last year we had all these horror movies that were surprise hits and got really good reviews. Barbarian. Smile. Now, I've seen these films, and while I think they have good elements, I think both of them are terribly overrated and have huge issues. Maybe I should make a video about Barbarian at some point, because that movie has an insane amount of plot holes that just drove me crazy. Justin Long's great, though. But no, having said all this, right, I'm not talking about this to talk about those movies. I'm here to talk about the scariest film that came out last year. I don't know why no one's discussing this. It's being completely ignored as a horror film. The community of horror fans and the mainstream have just put this movie off to the side. I'm talking about The Fablemans. That's right, from great horror director Steven Spielberg. I mean, this is the guy who did Jaws. He, you know, ghost-directed uh, Poltergeist. So in general, you know, he has some horror movies under his credits. I mean, he didn't do it himself. He was also indirectly associated with the Twilight Zone incident, so that's as horrific as it gets. Honestly, and I've seen Always, I've seen 1941, they're hard to forget. You know, it's almost as traumatizing as Schindler's List. So Spielberg in his whole career has always been very soft. He's always been very much like the craftsman who's trying to deliver the most sentimental, the most positive, and the most exciting big movie that you can imagine. This is really what led to him being like the director of the 20th century in a lot of ways, especially the later half of the 20th century. But nobody talks about how weird Spielberg movies can be sometimes. Ever so often he makes a film that's a little bit darker, a little bit perverse, or just honestly doesn't make any sense. Munich's a good example. While I really like that movie, there's a sequence at the end where Eric Bana is banging his wife. And while he's banging his wife, it's cross-cutting between that and the victims of the Munich shootings at the Olympics. Now, I get it on some level, but when you're watching it and you see Eric Bana's cum face and then it cuts back to guys getting shot, it's just like, what is this? What are you trying to say? And politically, that film's all over the place. And then there's weird stuff in Amistad. There's weird stuff in the BFG. Ever so often, right, he'll do something a little off. I've never seen something like this from him. This is his weirdest movie. This is his most perverse movie. This is a home movie. This isn't even a fucking movie. He didn't make a film. Like, when I was reading the reviews for this and all the critics were saying it's this beautiful coming-of-age story, comedy, mixed with this story about a kid becoming a filmmaker in this family drama, I was picturing something that had elements of E.T. or had elements of Close Encounters, and then with some of the more dry historical stuff that's been in recent films of his, like Lincoln or Bridge of Spies. No. No, that's not what this is. This is a therapy session. And it honestly was something I don't even know if I wanted to see. I, this film genuinely made me uncomfortable, and I don't know why more reviews aren't acknowledging this about the film. Even in Spielberg's Golden Globe speech, he kind of hints at the fact about how weird this movie is. But I'll focus on one character in particular that bothers me. Mitzi Fableman, played by Michelle Williams, based off Spielberg's mom. A lot of critics early in the year were predicting that she was going to win an Oscar for this performance. Now, obviously, Kate Blanchett's the front runner for Best Actress, and many consider Michelle Williams to be a supporting character in the movie. No, this whole movie is about this character of Mitzi. This is the strangest film I've maybe ever seen by an American filmmaker exploring their mother, their own mother, in a film. And not as they exploring his mother in a way that's complimentary or with this kind of veneer of the past. No, his mother is crazy. 
And I know that's a pejorative we're not allowed to use anymore. So I'll say that she was mentally unwell and clearly wasn't properly medicated at the time or the father just didn't have the resources to take care of her. This performance is insane. This is an insane performance. It's scary. She's legitimately scary. It gave me Hannah Baker vibes from 13 Reasons Why. This is the kind of chick you're undeniably attracted to, but you should completely stay away from. It's Garden State, but she's not even like a manic pixie dream girl. She's some ideal 50s housewife that's not an ideal 50s housewife. She's psychotic. She puts her kids in danger. There's a sequence where a tornado shows up out of nowhere, and instead of like running away from it, she loads all of the kids up into the car, gives the newborn baby to Paul Dano's character, who I just feel bad for the entire film, and then rides into the tornado with their children. And it's like, what is... What the fuck is this? Beyond that, she's having an affair with Seth Rogen on the side, the Uncle Benny character. And the way that Spielberg finds out about this is that he's filming footage of a camping trip, and then when he looks at it, he sees how close the relationship is. Now, that's a good storytelling device. You know, sort of the truth and fiction between the camera lens and the person making the movie and us receiving the movie. The last shot's very much about that in The Fablemans. And I would have liked to film about that, or a film that was more focused on Spielberg becoming a director. There's clever things in this. But every time that Michelle Williams is in the movie, I was just so on edge and creeped out by everyone reacting to her. That camping scene I talked about, there's a scene where she dances in a nightgown, and the daughter's pointing out like, Mom, you're naked underneath there. They can see you. And the father and the Seth Rogen character are watching while teenage Steven Spielberg is filming his mother, like, sexually. I'm not exaggerating this. This is what's happening in the scene. They're, the daughter's trying to cover up their eyes and stuff. And I, it's just so perverse. Spielberg doesn't do stuff like this. Like, it genuinely feels like he's attracted to his mother. And I don't know if he was, he did that, like, for the movie's narrative sake. He was trying to get into, you know, like, a Freudian sort of complex and stuff like that. But... Beyond that, there's a sequence where she smacks him on the back. He's going to go to a swim meet. He gets a mark on his back from her. He goes into the bedroom. She follows him. He's just in swim trunks. She's like wrestling with him. And throughout the movie, he's projecting stuff that he makes in his closet. He locks her in the closet so she can watch the footage of her with Seth Rogen. She crawls out crying and grabbing him like, please don't hate me. Please don't tell your father. And it's just, it's a weird relationship. Especially for the context of the time, of the era. Like, there's some stuff like this in Mad Men, but this is way beyond that. Not just that, she abandons her family. She decides to split them up. Now, the sisters, I think, go live with them at some point, and then Spielberg's with his father. But the whole movie, like, it's just such a weird person. She doesn't use uh, plates or silverware or everything's on a... Uh, paper plates and then she folds it up and throws it away in the trash. She clearly doesn't want to be a housewife because she's a concert pianist and she wanted to pursue an art career but she didn't get to do that because I guess because she was a woman in that time or because she was dedicated to raising her children. But her relationship with Sammy, the Spielberg surrogate, is just if this is what really happened, if this is really what Steven Spielberg's mother was like, because if this is not what she was like and he fictionalized this, he's a horrible human being and a really bad son. But I'm inclined to believe that this is real. So if this is what really happened, if this was really his mother, if this was who raised him, he is so much more psychologically damaged and weird than I ever thought of. Like, like I said with the Golden Globe speech, it's like he's about to cry about it. There's even a weird scene where they like cut her fingernails off so she doesn't click the piano keys. These all feel like horror scenes. They feel like something that would be in like a movie uh, like The Favorite or The Lobster. You know, it doesn't feel like a Steven Spielberg movie. And you juxtapose this with the other stuff in the film that he's trying to do, and it just doesn't make sense. You're watching this completely experimental, borderline surreal home movie about a family going through changes as they move to different places and relationships become revealed. And then on the other side of this, it is just a coming of age story and him getting a girlfriend or him making up with the bully that's picking on him and then learning he has power behind the camera. But Michelle Williams' performance, I don't know if it's great because that's exactly what he asked for, or if this is one of her worst performances and it's overacted and terrible, it's like, should she get an Oscar? Should she get a Razzie? I don't know. And 
the thing that gets me about this is hardly anyone's talking about this. This movie didn't do well. Critics talk about it in a certain way. It's won some awards. But if you actually watch the film, it's not the movie you're promised from the trailer. And everyone's just going to focus on David Lynch and all this other stuff. But the Mitzi Fableman character is like the female version of a literally me. She's like, she's there's something dead in her eyes that's scary. It's like just black holes, you know, and... Sometimes it feels like she doesn't know what she's doing. There's even a scene. God, I'm even going beyond that. There's a scene. <laughs> There's so many where her mother dies and she gets a call on the phone and she hears her mother talking to her, giving her a message. Now, is he putting that in there to like show the difference between fantasy and reality? Or is she bipolar or something like that or schizophrenic or something and imagining this voice talking to her on the phone? I don't know. He doesn't seem to want to diagnose his mother with something specifically. He just wants to show her for how she was. But man, I don't know why you would make something like this about your mother, even if it's the truth. This is not a good portrait of this woman. It's not at all. I know she's passed away and they're older now, but I I really think this was a film he almost should have just made and kept to himself and not shown anyone because I don't know how much value it really brings in the broader scope of the medium outside of like him trying to hash out his own problems. Some people said this film was propaganda of him like patting himself on the back for being so successful. No, this is him like really dealing with some steep psychological issues that I, I'm not sure if they make a great story or if you pick the right thing to focus on. If you're going to make a movie like this, then you have to commit. But it's Spielberg, so he tries to have his cake and eat it too. I'm scared of Mitzi Fableman. I just don't. I feel so horrible for the father character in this. I don't think he does anything wrong throughout the movie. Everything the guy does makes sense. I mean, she even buys a pet monkey like Ross on Friends, and she just gets it to have fun. She just does things. She's like the feather in Forrest Gump. She's just drifting through the wind, going on to cause chaos somewhere else in this timeline. I mean, if it was a Coen Brothers movie, because this did remind me of some of their work, like A Serious Man or Barton Fink, or even a Charlie Kaufman film, I think it could have pulled off some of these things better. But Spielberg just doesn't really have the complexity for this kind of story, or I don't think he really feels comfortable with it. So while I do like the film, in a lot of ways too, I also think it's a disaster, but maybe intentionally so. And I would like to start the conversation about this because... Like I said, nobody's talking about this, and it's honestly one of his most interesting films in a long time because some ways you can look at it that this is, yeah, it's indulgent to the, to the highest degree, and then you can look at it and think, is this the most honest, personal, and yeah, honestly experimental film he's made or one of of his entire career? I don't know, but it's the best horror movie of 2022. By far has the scariest scenes. Michelle Williams gives the horror performance of the year in this. I mean, it's it's Mia Farrow levels, you know, with the with the real life insanity and the in movie insanity. Um, and you know, I I I'm not trying to harp on it too much or make a big deal about like I'm Spielberg having this weird sexual desire to his mother. I'm not trying to judge him for that, but. I just thought that was so weird. Maybe I was just projecting. So I asked a friend of mine. I said, hey, man, have you seen the movie? There's these weird scenes that feel sexual between the mother. And what he said back to me was, it's Michelle Williams. If she was my mom, I'd want to have sex with her too. Well, what can you say to that?